What? <laughs> Sorry. Wow, that was like the beginning of it right there. What's up, horror fans? Anchor Pete here, and I'm with my daughter, Pepper. She is not as commonly seen on the Lassercast channel, but you know what? I rightfully deserve to be. There you go, right? Danny usually has Charlotte, and we've had Pepper on maybe once or twice. Well, she's here today with me to talk about Night Books. Yes. The trailer just dropped on Netflix today, and the movie is going to... Wow. The trailer just dropped. The movie's going to be on Netflix in September. So we only got a couple of weeks before it comes out. Yeah, yeah. So, Pepper, you said you read a little bit about the, of this book. Yes, I did. Um, We read it in, like, school, like, the library and reads to us sometimes, like, in elementary school at least. Okay. And um, we just didn't get around to finishing it in school. We, I read, like, the first three chapters in school. So. so, like, if you're looking at the whole book, is that, like... Just maybe one fourth of it, or is it more? Is, is there a lot of chapters? Um, I think there is like a lot of chapters. Yeah, like at least like fifteen or something. Okay, well, the book was written by um, J. A. White. I'm not really familiar with this stuff. I haven't read uh, read his stuff, but I do know the director, David Yaroveski. He directed this movie called Brightburn, which. Do you want to know what that's about? I think it'd be up your alley, Pepper. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's hear it. Over on our, my other channel that Pepper has, is on sometimes, uh, Comic Books Transformed, we talk about this Superman show called Superman and Lois, right? Well, there's this movie called Brightburn where the idea is that what if Superman was evil and as a little... I heard this already. No, but what if like the little kid of Superman when he's growing up is evil and he like brutally murders people? And so it's a horror movie... But it's like a Superman that, like an evil Clark Kent. It's it's actually pretty scary too. It is. Yeah, man. So so. Oh, wait, does he murder like Ken and what's his name? Ken and Barbie. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's it doesn't have any of the Superman cast members. It's like a different world. But it's just the idea of like, what if the kid ha that had Superman powers, an alien, just murdered. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, it was written by uh, Mickey Daughtry and um dave wait no i already wrote him down oh dang i i didn't write down the other writer's name but um mickey daughtry is one of the writers for uh the curse of la la rona which danny and i reviewed when we were doing our um conjuring videos right mm -hmm. and so the curse of la la rona that wasn't our favorite conjuring movie but we pretty much like every movie in that series so we definitely want to give this a shot too this it's also produced by sam raimi and he did all those spider-man movies that we saw yeah. and he's also done the evil dead movies which danny and charlotte have ash, reviewed. Evil dead? ash versus evil dead that's the show right yeah. so there's a lot of people that have made some really fun interesting things right behind this movie and definitely some scary things mm -hmm. so do you think that this looks at all scary not real i mean i think that skull thing looks kind of cool the like little bug yeah, it was like a almost like a moth with a skull face. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. It was like an egg on the ground and then like its claws sliced open the egg. I thought that looked really cool, that effect. Yeah. Um, none of the rest of the stuff really scared me though. Yeah. Well when Danny um on Twitter someone said that this is considered like gateway horror. And gateway horror where it's like stuff that you watch as a kid or read as a kid. So is stranger things like gateway horror? Kind of, and it kind of dips into just full blown horror too, especially now that we're watching Stranger Things season three. It's getting pretty intense, right? Yeah, it gets kind of gross. Yeah. But um, what I was going to say was that it kind of reminded me of um, The House of the Clock and Its Walls. Did you see? Do you remember that? Yeah, um, we watched it when I was a little bit littler, like eight or something. Yeah, it kind of had that aesthetic, and even that was directed by a horror director. I too. liked the House of the Clock and Its Walls a lot, and I don't know if I like this one as much because while it looks visually cool, I didn't see like so many lines. Like all the movies today, they're like, "Boom, we have a shot that's cool," but then the actual movie itself doesn't play it out well. Okay. I do think the book would have been good if we had read it a little longer, but. Okay, so you like the source material. Yeah. Well, what I'll say is this, that the witch that has these kids as, the, as her prisoner, mm -hmm. she's played by uh, Kristen Ritter. And Kristen Ritter is, um, she played a character named Jessica Jones on, on Marvel's uh, Netflix show, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a superhero. She's real badass. And then...
But anyway, um, let's just keep going. So Kristen Ritter, she kind of plays characters that are mean. Like, you know, her show is called Don't Trust the B, but, it, you know, you know, it's the B word that we kind of don't want you to use. Don't, um, don't trust the B in apartments, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, so you mean like um, the curse word? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that, they're saying that about her, right? Mm -hmm. And then besides that, she was in the show Breaking Bad. Um, but a lot of times she plays characters that kind of have an edge to them. And I think that she'll be she'll do a great job playing a witch. Yeah, she seemed pretty mean to those children. Right? I, mean, I remember um, supposedly she only keeps you if she has a purpose for you in the book. So, you know. Yeah, and it looks like the purpose in this one is to have the little boy tell her story every night. Mm -hmm. And they don't say the little boy's name, but then they say the girl's name. Her name is Yasmin. Mm -hmm. And I think she's going to try to help him escape from this apartment that they're trapped in. Yeah, I remember in like the chapters, she seemed a little snotty. <laughs> Yasmin? Yeah, Yasmin in the first chapters of the book. However, I mean, I would be a little snotty too if a witch was making me like clean our chimneys and stuff. <laughs> oh, so she makes her do kind of like the housework and the chores? Yeah, I think so. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah, that would make me snotty too. I don't know. I mean, it looks like it's it's fun. I mean, besides it being set in a uh, apartment complex or just an apartment, it, it looks like it has some fantastic sets. Mm -hmm. Like they go to other worldly places? Yeah, yeah. Like I remember in the book, yeah, there's this huge library where he writes every night. Oh, okay. For the Witch? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of another show that was on Netflix called Lock and Key, which is based on one of my favorite comics ever. And that's a, a show where there's this family that lives in this... Uh, like kind of mansion this estate and there's special keys and when you put them into a lock it'll open up a door and you might travel to another world there you might be able to travel into somebody's mind by opening one of the doors you might get special powers so it, it kind of reminded me of that too the idea that like you could travel places from that apartment um but it, it just kind of reminded me of that and like the witches just this kind of thing where as a kid who's maybe even younger than you or just right around your age, it'll have stuff that's kind of intense, but not true over the top horror. Yeah. Um, I'm an Australian and Stranger Things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pepper's like a veteran now because she's been watching Stranger Things. And we have just uh, almost finished season three. So um, we're going to do a review. We just put up our season one review with Danny and Charlotte. And then Pepper and I will do a season two review with Danny and Charlotte coming up. Um, and then we'll do season three. Yeah, and season four, I think, is coming out in January. Yeah. All right. Well, do you have anything else to say about that trailer or about the book, Pepper? No. I just think it might be interesting, and I want to see if the movie differs from the book at all. Cool. Yeah. Maybe I'll finish it. Yeah, I think um, Pepper and I might sit down and we watch the movie, and then we'll throw up a review on the channel if it's good. Hopefully we'll be. But anyway, um, Danny and I, tomorrow we're going to meet and record a, a review of Insidious because Danny and I are doing a James Wan-a-thon. So we are covering the horror movies of James, James Wan leading all the way up to his movie Malignant, which also comes out in September. And that is what we got coming up on the last recast for now. By the way, this is my daughter, and we had at one point named our channel uh, Horror Dads, right, because Danny's got a... 10 year old girl i've got an 11 year old girl we're introducing them to horror but it turns out there is a horror dads podcast and there's a horror dads like instagram account and they have their own merchandise and they contacted us click the link in the description no, no we're, we're definitely not putting it in the description i mean <laughs> good for them but uh we could use a new name if you could think of a name that has to do with being dads and being into horror oh boy good we, we we love that Cool. I think I've done enough stuttering for tonight. So check out this trailer. I think it was pretty good. And Pepper and I will do a review when it comes out on Netflix. Y'all have a good night.